Welcome to the OIS Podcast. Today, Dr. Asan Sadri speaks with Manaj Vyas and Sanjeev Ganatra, CEO and Senior VP of Sales and Marketing, respectively, for CBCC Global Research. CBCC is a CRO that runs clinical trials for ophthalmology companies big and small. They talk about why CBCC is excited about getting eye care products across the finish line and share valuable advice for physicians and others getting started in clinical research. Isan, take it away. Hi, everybody. This is Isan Sadri, board certified ophthalmologist here in Newport Beach, California. I'm also a GP at Visionary Ventures, and I just, I'm here with my good friends, Manoj and Sanjeev who are at CBCC Global. And we're here today in an interesting time post-COVID. And we're talking about sort of, you know, early development, mid-development um, of family companies. But I've had the fortune of um, knowing these two fine gentlemen for some time and working with them um, and talking to them and kind of understanding their methodology. And I really wanted the, our ecosystem to really learn about not just them, but also what they do and what the part of the um, ecosystem of ophthalmology development they participate in and what value add they provide. And, and it's, you know, Sanjeev and I have known each other many, many years, I would say probably north of 10 years. And as his, we'll go through his background and Manoj is a recent friend. And John, I'm just really excited for you guys to come on board. How are you guys doing? Doing well, absolutely doing well. And thank you guys for having us. Uh, this is exciting for us to be able to give uh, the ophthalmology community, uh, a little bit better sense of who CBCC Global Research is. Um, obviously, um, communities in oncology, neurology, uh, dermatology, and medical device are familiar with us, but we want to make sure that ophthalmology knows us just as well. Yeah, well, welcome. Manoj, tell us a little bit about your background. For those of you who don't know Sanjeev, we'll go through his background, but Manoj, you're, you're mostly in oncology as a background and a general partner of CBCC Global Research. Um, walk us through your personal background. Where did you grow up? And then, you know, what made you, an, you know, what were the sort of some of the influential, um, you know, uh, inflection points in your career that you said, hey, this is, I want to be an entrepreneur? Sure. So first of all, thank you very much, Dr. Sadri, for this uh, opportunity. We really appreciate that. Uh, going back to uh, my background, I grew up in India. Uh, uh, all the part of my my initial years, I was in Gujarat, uh, one of the very entrepreneurial state within India, uh, which itself is coming as a is as a big country, which is contributing to a life science and pharmaceutical uh, for entire world. Uh, I I did uh, study also the similar thing. I did my master in clinical research. And that's where actually I got uh, pretty much inclined towards clinical research as a field. Uh, after spending a few initial years uh, with a few companies, I, I, I really become uh, more and more serious about my entrepreneurial journey and which I started in 2011. Since then, I have been uh, independent doing my own business. Uh, and then slowly, slowly, I started uh, uh, getting more exposed to the Western world. Uh, in initial career, career also, I had a uh, lot of clients and uh, friends in uh, US and Europe. Uh, and uh, one of this uh, way, in such way, we got uh, connected with uh, Dr. Patel, the founder of CBCC. And that's how I, I, I got in touch with them. And then uh, the rest of the history, we are really doing amazing job as a partner. And uh, uh, with that, a great combination, we are growing CBCC Global Research to the next level. That's terrific. So, you know, the, it's an interesting space you're in because the most of, as you um, know, um, you know, the, the world is, most ophthalmologists, we, when we see patients, we're, we're dealing with post-approval products in the marketplace, in the pharmacy, um, or in a surgical center setting now really compounding pharmacy and those things. And for those um, folks that don't do clinical trials, I think it'll be really interesting for them to, you know, understand um, what CBC Global Research does and some similar uh, companies do. And what are some of the sort of things that are exciting in your path right now um, uh, that, are, that you're focusing on? 
Yes, yeah, so as uh, uh, as I mentioned, CVCC uh, uh, as as a, as a group, uh, the origin is in cancer care, and that's how we got exposed to the oncology clinical trial. Uh, company CBCC started doing clinical trials in early early years, uh, starting from 1995. Uh, we do a lot of trials with all big uh, MNC companies in oncology space. But then uh, we acquired a CRO in uh, India called Vipgyor, and that gave us a pretty good uh, entry point into a medical device space. And uh, uh, before we, go, we we acquired that company, uh, there was a there was a big US MNC company which used to work a lot with uh, Vipgyor uh, into cardiac and ophthalmic space, and that's how we got to uh, uh, get exposed to the ophthalmic world. We started working in this particular space in device, and then since then we are gaining a lot of expertise, um, experience, and then uh, we are we are really drug and device ophthalmic space is one of our sweet spot now. We are very very much excited about uh, this particular space. Uh, we are learning everything uh, and anything which is uh, important for us to get uh, the work done in in terms of the execution. Along the way, we are uh, creating a good partnership like what we have been doing with you, Dr. Sadri. We are really thankful to you and the entire uh, California uh, ophthalmic ecosystem. It's, it's amazing. Uh, I personally never knew that uh, Orange County and uh, California uh, group of people have such a strong influence in uh, entire worldwide ophthalmic market. So we feel lucky that we are at the right uh, space uh, into the right uh, community here through which we can really create a big impact uh, for the entire world. Very good. That's a good summary. So, uh, Sanjeev, let's talk about you a little bit. I, I know you and the, a lot of the KOLs know you from your background. Tell us about your personal background. Where did you grow up um, for those people that don't know you? And then what are some early influential sort of entrepreneurial inflection points for you? Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Isan. Um, so, you know, I, I grew up early in my life in on the East Coast, and uh, my my family comes from a medical background. My dad was a physician. My mom, you know, trained as a as a dentist, and we moved to the West Coast um, at an at a you know again an early stage in my in my life. Um, have been in California for the majority of it, having studied at UC San Diego, and then did graduate school at. The Drucker School of Management as well as USC. For me, uh, I've been in the healthcare space for the majority of my career. I was really blessed early on to have great mentors. Uh, many of them stay within the industry. Uh, Chris Dax, Mike Padilla, Ben Zanito, Tom Mitro. These are folks who have been guideposts for me in terms of the way that they approach different aspects of in the industry, how they think about development, how they think about partnership, how they think about care and concern for all of those that are in the ecosystem. And uh, I, I will never reach to that level, but I certainly am thankful for all of what they were able to do for me early on. From an education standpoint and, and others who have influenced me, from a family standpoint, we have folks who have started businesses have been incredibly successful in different areas, not even in healthcare. And speaking with them to be able to deliver that value, but be able to be away at a distance and, and be able to deliver value to so many people, it was so important to me. I, I thought about you know medicine, but I wanted to be able to deliver that healthcare value from a distance. And I, I feel that I've been able to marry those two together. That's terrific. Uh, you know, so you mentioned some big names, you know, Tom Mitro and Vince Nito, as you know, they're, they're good friends of ours. And what is it that when you're going through this and you see some people that are very successful in your pathway, that are th some elements that are in your career, some, some mentors you have, maybe from both of you, tell me some highlights of mentors you had initial career path that really led you to then to think about, okay, this is what success looks like. And, but also this is what this, I want to go into eye care. Well, you know, um, why I care, why not, you know, other fields. Let's, Sanjeev, let's start with you. Okay, sure, yeah. So I will say that the, the thing that resonated most about the people that I've been able to be around is their depth of knowledge, but at the same time, their sense of humbleness 
about being with anybody and everybody and understanding and catering to that that level of of individual somebody who is brand new to ophthalmology they're not trying to show off they're trying to make sure that they educate those that uh, are familiar with with ophthalmology and eye care they are able to think about things in such a nuanced depth and how to bring value to the physicians to the patients to our community differently than what has been in the market today is is completely evidenced by the fact that the the folks that i'm mentioning are not individuals who are in executive positions of existing large big companies but who have started at the ground and have brought innovation forward not once not twice but repeatedly and i think that they are always looking for how is it that we can help what is the angle that we can bring to the market and they execute on that effectively and i i i feel uh, again i feel like they have been able to teach me so many things that i i'm hoping to eventually get to that place no let's just talk to you a little bit about what your sure. thoughts uh, on that question an amazing two points uh, mentorship is uh, extremely important for me and has been the biggest uh, uh, i think addition or or or, or a probably uh, a positive thing in my career uh, in my early uh, early age of my career i really go to know good great leaders those people who could uh, uh, lead the company uh, and then they guided me that if you really want to be a successful leader you have to act as a one and then you need to really have a good team which can really really uh, stay with you for a long time in your good time and bad time uh, you need to empower the team that is another big learning i have i have really learned from the mentorship or or from the mentor and another thing is that not a short term but long term vision into into the business so this couple of examples or learning which i got to learn from mentors so mentor have been a tremendous help to me and then one of the driver for my success whatever uh, little success i have achieved um, another uh, uh, why i care uh, because as i mentioned to you i did uh, uh, the origin of uh, cbcc global research and for me also was into cancer care or oncology trials and then uh, neuropsychiatry those were the area i care uh, to be very honest when i got exposed to this world and specifically this california orange county world i got really really uh uh excited because it is a small community everyone knows uh, the other person and then you start creating those kind of a, a a close circle in which you can really uh live together grow together and then have a have a good time uh i would also thank you dr sadhita that you have been uh, uh, another influencer for me specifically personally the way you got uh, us exposed to this circle which is pretty influential but also at the same time very supportive so that's why i really enjoy i care well no, it's a pleasure i you know my passion as you guys both know is really moving along the uh, technologies that uh, fill an unmet need for our patients so you know to the extent that you know we can do that that'd be great let's pivot let's let's say i'm a comprehensivist i don't do any clinical trials um what is this space what is this research space that we're doing? What, what kind of value add is CBCC Global Research adding? Um, and what are its competitors? What are what is the what is the void that that you're trying to fill? So, for a comprehensive ophthalmologist that's not doing clinical trials, the the reality of what it is that they have in their practice evolves from innovation. The ability to be able to use femtosecond laser and uh, you know, improved IOLs uh, to open that cabinet and see novel glaucoma medications and be able to pull those things out in different categories at a moment's notice. Um, the ability to have different solutions now for presbyopia than a, you know, a surgical procedure or in laser procedure, but something that is therapeutically delivered. All of that comes from the innovation that takes place years ago or currently for them to have in their office tomorrow. And so our, our humble part of that is to help facilitate those companies that want to innovate and have those assets or are thinking about those assets to innovate and give them the guideposts 
give them the clinical operations, be able to give them all of those pieces along the way to help that comprehensive ophthalmologist to have those tools and resources in practice. If we were to think back, you know, even 20 years ago, uh, the, and again, specific, you know, going into retina for, for, for just a moment, the choices in retina were not as, now let's put it 30 years ago, the choices in retina were not nearly as uh, open or available as what you see today. There was, there was an interest by industry. There were investors who put risk out there. There were physicians who had to think about things in a progressive manner for those patients. And all of that combination with clinical research support is how we have that innovation in the office available for those patients today. Very good. Manoj? Yeah, on the same line, I think uh, what Sanjeev mentioned, in addition to that, what I would uh, really point out here is that being a non-ophthalmic uh, uh, mainstream guy, I would, I would think that uh, the void, which is not for 100% ophthalmic focused companies, but companies like our current big few clients, which are from India and China, which are not, uh, doesn't have any history in the ophthalmic world, but, but now they are getting very, very serious for this particular uh, rising field and then they want to get exposed and they want to really uh, try their luck, then company like CBCC Global Research would come into the play because uh, we understand their pain. We understand that where they are not really uh, nicely placed, they wouldn't have access to a big KOL right away. And they wouldn't uh, be really, really uh, able to work with those top name in ophthalmic focus companies because those ophthalmic focus companies, even the CROs, they don't understand the pain point of these companies because they have never got exposed to a non-ophthalmic world. So that's where I feel that we have created a niche for those, those companies, international companies uh, from emerging countries and Asian countries. Uh, they, can, they, are relying us, uh, they, they are relying on us a lot uh, to really get their strong foot into uh, this amazing uh, ophthalmic ecosystem. Isan, I think, I think Manoj brings up a good point where there's sort of a unique, uh, you know, what we believe to be a unique difference with CBCC Global Research, where we work with so many different types of companies. We work with innovator companies. We work with innovator companies that are small and large and be able to support them. But we also work with those companies who are potentially looking to say, hey, there's a market opportunity here. These products are coming off label or coming off patent. And we have an opportunity to be able to be in that space as well. So how can we, how can we find the, the you know, efficient CRO that can get us there in a way that makes sense for us. And we fit that model very nicely for a lot of these different companies. Personally, I wanted you guys on is to kind of educate our, our audience to, of how expansive, you know, research is in ophthalmic community. Um, not only are there unmet needs out there, but really to Manoj's point and your point, Sanjeev, it's, it's, a, it's a global, Phenomena, and we're all really connected, and there, the both the capital is global, and but also the intellectual capital is is global, and this this is a big what I call ophthalmology is a very big small field. Everyone kind of knows everybody, and there's everyone who exits comes right back. It's incredible, um, as you know, Sanjeev. It's a, it's like a big family, and I, you know, I think that the you know oncology is probably very similar traits because I've heard. From I, you know, I, that's not my expertise, but I've heard the similar things as well. So as you're sort of looking to expand your services and technology, and what's what's exciting to you? What's what's the next one to five years look like, um, both in the ecosystem, just independent of your company, but also your vision of the company? Yeah, sure. I think it's an amazing question. Uh, what we are focusing now, short term versus long term, is that in short term we are really working very hard to get really good strength in our regulatory offering. Uh, right now we are doing great job, but we want to go to the next level in which we really support uh, those companies which want to do a quick uh, uh, 510K or a quick uh, uh, pre-IND or IND work on a, on, on a drug and device side. Um, also, there is a tremendous uh, uh, suggestion or a feedback from our clients 
when we get the annual survey or a feedback that they need our support on preclinical as well. So uh, we have a very strong plan to put up the preclinical uh, uh, facilities in India and US. And the third, I think, which is on a, on a long term is to have a very strong organic presence in a few of the countries in Europe, because that's where also the, the medical device space, uh, they love that, that particular region. And we definitely want to grow into that particular area as well. So these are the few areas or the action point through which we uh, want to uh, uh, go to the next level. Very good. So we could talk for hours and we often do. We talk about global sort of needs, ophthalmic, non-ophthalmic, but our passions of ophthalmology. Tell us some of the things, if we were to talk to you, if I was a young 20 year old, 21 year old finishing college, we always like to give some pearls back to people like in not, well, not only the career, but also just some things that you would have done differently. Um, we don't call it regrets, we call it learned um, background. How, do I, how would I improve my decisions from before? So what are some things you would give back? What are some things you would, you would uh, mentor your, your young self if you were to go back? So uh, it's a great question. And I think that for me, um, what, I would, what I would suggest to somebody is a suggestion that was given to me when I was at a library you know, one day, which was ongoing education and focus in on specific topics of math or accounting. And I know this is, sounds silly and it's not at all what we're related to, but the concept at that time of that gentleman telling me at that young age was ongoing education. You have to continue to be able to reach out and want to get, uh, be, be educated and be hungry for being curious, right? We, we, we can easily later on in our careers, find, find a niche that works for us, find comfort zones that work for us and, and live in that space. But guess what? That's not where growth is happening. We have to continue to be curious and, and look for that hunger. And I, I, I look at it when we're trying challenging ourselves through education. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's, it's a great point what Sanjeev mentioned. In addition to that, I would, uh, for any young guy who is getting into the, into, into the professional world, uh, three suggestions I would, I would make. One is uh, not a short-term, but long-term uh, plan, which really uh, helps you a lot. Because short-term gain can happen once or twice, but it would be a very, very, very temporary in nature or uh, probably very short compared to what you can achieve in, in long-term strategies. Uh, second would be uh, training. I would uh, always uh, uh, ask people that uh, continuously train yourself because learning is the most powerful weapon through which we can you can differentiate yourself uh, from the crowd. More and more you learn and you advance yourself would be uh, very, very, uh, I think, uh, important for you. And third would, uh, which I've been learning is that not to multitask. You just stay focused on one particular thing. Uh, uh, Dr. Patel, who is my partner and founder of CBCC has always, uh, he never told me any, anything not to do or not to do, but one advice he has been giving me is that it's always better to do one big thing than to do a 10 or 20 small things. And more and more I learn and understand that it is actually helping me a lot. And in fact, in 2021, I have made few very good decisions uh, based on one simple small advice that mm -hmm. it is important to create one big thing compared to 10 or 20 small things. So yeah. these are the learnings. Well, those are great. I'd love to keep talking for you guys further. Thank you for joining us. And I'm sure we're gonna bring you back on and hear more in the years to come. Come. Thank you again for coming, and it was a, just a pleasure to be with you guys today. Thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Sadri. Thanks, Sisan. Thank you for listening, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the OIS podcast. Be sure to listen in next week as we discuss the latest innovations in ophthalmology with experts in science, medicine, and industry. Subscribe to our iTunes channel so you don't miss a thing. Got a story of your own to tell? Apply to be a guest at ois.net.